time has come. All nations, all the means of communications, the Church of Jesus Christ, gather to hear the ruler of the Gentiles, one who died, was resurrected, and returned to life. He has returned. The Lord is here. José Luis de Jesús Miranda The Man Christ Jesus Hello Bless. Today's topic is Living the Age to Come Part 2 And now The Man Christ Jesus 1 Corinthians 3 18 Let no one deceive himself if anyone among you seems to be wise, where? In this age. Let him become a fool, that he may become wise. <laughs> that was dedicated to the apostles by Paul. You remember when he said, some of you say that you are of Peter or of Cephas. Look, if you think you are wise, become a fool and pay attention to me so that I can make you wise. But listen to this. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of, of, and who were those rulers and principalities? The apostles. Look how it says, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. It does not say heaven. It says heavenly places. That means where we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. Right here where we are seated with him, right here is those principalities and powers. Also, everything, everything that does not come from the predestined wisdom of the age to come according to the wisdom of the wise master builder paul is sorcery a work of the flesh sorcery is in galatians it's a work of the flesh the same thing that produces envy jealousy hatred contentions adultery well sorcery is also there that's one of the works of the flesh this is why paul said that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons? But who teaches doctrines of demons? Well, the first were the apostles. You know why, Paul? Do demons have doctrines? What Paul was trying to tell you when he was saying doctrines of demons is that everything that is not grace in this covenant, Paul considers it a doctrine of the flesh. So then if I do not preach grace according to the new covenant, to the powers of the age to come, then I am preaching doctrines of demons. Second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 14. But this is Paul speaking about them. Listen, but listen, but their minds were blinded. Hey, but their minds were blinded. Right? That Paul is criticizing? When you single out or explain, it's like a constructive criticism. So then Paul is speaking about them. He was the only one. He was the only one that knew this. This is why in 1 Timothy, he said, I am the first. He says, I, Paul, the first of this class of the powers of the age to come. I'm the first one who went into that age. But even to this day, when Moses is read, hello, I have a name for Moses soon. Keep reading. A veil lies on their heart, on their spirit, whose minds, the God of this age, God with a uppercase G, how is it? You know who the God of this age is? Moses, the law, the flesh. The God of this age has blinded. 
Why is it the mind? Because the doctrine of law blinds your mind. The God of that age, not of the present age to come, that age blinded their minds who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. He would have said, the spirit of this age, because spirit is opinion, is teaching. The God of this age has blinded the minds. What is he talking about? Which is the homiletic rule that does not fail? The context of what is being talked about. But what are we talking about here? We're talking about a mind that was blinded, that Moses was the one that blinded it. We're speaking about the law. It Talking about the God of that age, Moses, the prophets, the law, the flesh. That's what blinds. What is it that has this world blinded so that they cannot see this glorious gospel that we teach? The religion and the commandments. God wants to use you. When you speak to a friend, when someone sees, not that you're perfect, but when they see your behavior and the way that you deal with things, in the way that you act, someone has to notice how you live. It's not the way you brush your hair. No, that's flesh. It's a behavior. The way you deal with people at your job, there's something that people have to notice. That's a behavior. And we have to be occupied in that. Because sooner or later, people will say, hey, why are you like that? Your behavior is different. Pay attention because if your behavior is not good, then you are just eating the letter. If you are still someone who mistreats and hurts and you are hurting people, especially your family members, there's something wrong there. The grace has not been established in there yet. I think that I am in the truth because of the behavior that I have, because I can't hurt anyone. I treat my neighbors good, especially those I have learned to love the ones near me, because in the powers of the age to come, the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And that sword does not like to just sit there. It likes to penetrate. What it wants to do is go in and cut. That word goes in and starts to search. When the mind of Christ starts asking you, why do you do that? And why do you do that? And it starts to ask you things. And it gets you and it cuts you. Well, it's a two-edged sword. Sometimes it even bothers you. Don't ask me that now. Because this is a revelation in your mind with your mind, you serve the law of God in the age to come. In this new millennium, we need people with predestined wisdom, with a knowledge that know how to speak. Ministers, flame of fire. I declare myself healed, prosperous, and blessed. Abba Father. Lord.